Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Kyoto. We are here, sort of selfish of the station, um, going this morning to a temple which I absolutely love called Tofukuji. It's a bit of a, not really an obscure one, it's just not one of the like big temples. I think we're supposed to turn left here. <laughs> Sorry, there's a gate here, bit of a giveaway. Um, we've actually been up and about a little bit this morning. Uh, we went to a super cute cafe so close to our hotel called um, the Kairu. Ka it's really hard to say. Kairu Cafe, which is a frog. Kairo. Kairo. Kairo Cafe. Sounds like I'm saying Cairo with my accent. Um, which is a frog themed coffee shop. It was unbelievable. The thing that they do there is drip coffee. Drip coffee is so, so popular in Japan. And uh, Liam and I had coffee beans from two different places in the world. Liam had Honduras and I had Ethiopia and it was delicious. And a few little scones too, so good. And the theming in there, beautiful, super, super cute. Um, we then caught a train over here. So that's it, you're caught up. Now we're finding out how to get in. I forgot to tell you about how we got here. We took the train south from sort of Karasuma area where we're staying to uh, Tofukuji station on the Kayan line. One of the things I really like about the Kayan line is they have loads and loads of helpful stuff there for sort of planning walks around Kyoto so if you're not really too sure what you're doing um, pop to one of the stations and you can see usually a big map on the wall which tells you how to get to various tourist destinations um, on their line and some of their stations too have walking pamphlets so we found at the station that we got on the train at uh, walking tours for 60 minutes 90 minutes uh, recommended routes that you can take to see some big Kyoto sites I thought they were really awesome actually. I want to go back and get some. Anyway, now we're going to go in the temple. Well, you can see why I like it so much. This place is beautiful. I don't actually understand why it's not one of the sort of top picks for Kyoto because it really is amazing. Um, anyway, this is a Zen Buddhist temple and it's quite an old one. I think it was originally created in sort of around 1236, something like that, by the Fujiwara clan, which is kind of the ruling clan of Japan at the time. This is the Su Tenkyo Bridge. I did that without having to check the name. This is a Zoo Tenkyo bridge and it's extremely famous for uh, for fall season, for leaf changing season in autumn, fall, autumn, whatever you call it. All the trees out here are uh, trees which ch leaves change very, very abruptly in late November and it will be a beautiful time to come see this place because the whole thing will be painted red and oranges and other burnt colours which will just be amazing. But if you're not here at that time, you still have the beautiful view of this bridge which is just phenomenal, it's really cool. Well, I've found my favourite garden. Look at this. There's moss stairs over there. And this whole garden, Japanese style, completely covered in moss. Oh my God, that's really cute. Little bridge and everything. That's adorable. We have 
now entered into the Hojo, which is the head priest's living quarters. It's a separate fee to enter here. It's another 400 yen. The ticket to go into the bridge area was 400 yen, and to enter here, it's also 400 yen, so 800 yen in total, because that is how maths works. <laughs> the special part about this is the gardens, and I think what's particularly special about this Hojo is the gardens are surrounding the buildings, like there's one down here, which is kind of pebbly, and heavily and down here there's one which is moss but apparently each area is slightly different which is really cool <laughs> they have another bridge and leaf viewing platform here uh, so if you come here during the november season and the bridge is crazy busy you could come into the hojo area and uh, perhaps try your luck to see if you could get onto this viewing platform as well so much moss they really like squares here it's kind of a thing asked me before what my favorite temple is in Kyoto and I think the two that we've just seen this one that we're at right now and Tofukuji are probably my two favorite temples this one mostly because of the five-story pagoda that they have here which is amazing uh, it's probably best done in cherry blossom season because it also has a very unique garden and it has a very very tall weeping cherry blossom tree in it incredibly famous if you come during cherry blossom season this is a really lovely temple to come to we're quite lucky today because their flea market is on i'd heard about their flea market but i thought it was only a certain day of the year and i thought it was later on in the month um but we seem to have lucked out and it's on at the moment so we're gonna have a look around it looks like mostly antiques um but yeah we might find something special cool let's take a look i wouldn't mind having a tanuki oh that's more up our street goes on this flea market forever wow uh we were way over there when we started way way over there <laughs> it's really cool so i know it's gray <laughs> and there's no leaves on it but that tree that's being held up right now is the tree that has uh the cherry blossoms on it so if you come during cherry blossom season come here it looks amazing i do actually have a picture of it because i have been here during that time so i will show you guys now it's really really cool uh, we are going to head into the main temple building. We popped into the two main halls. Uh, one of them's a lecture hall. I think this is the main hall. Um, wait, 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 how do we do it? Way over there, there's a lecture hall. The lecture hall is really cool. There's a number of Buddha, 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 Buddhism statues that are displayed. Buddhist statues <laughs> that are displayed in there. And they're set up according to a mandala. So it's divided up into four separate sections and each separate bit of Buddhist statues has got a separate job like protecting the people or protecting the Buddhas there's actually one bit which is about protecting the Buddhas anyway it's really cool and then there's a giant Buddha statue flanked with two Buddha vistas in the main hall which I believe is sort of the main place where you would pray and such um, we've now come to take a look at the immense five-story pagoda <laughs> look at that 
<laughs> it's the tallest five-story pagoda in all of Japan. I completely forgot that. Every time I come here, I'm sure I read that same fact and I just completely forgot. But this is the tallest five-story pagoda in all of Japan. So if you come to Kyoto, which is likely that you will do if you take a trip here, come see it. Like, it's the tallest one. It's amazing. Irregularly, irregularly, it is open. Um, all I, The only information I can see about it is that the opening is irregular, so they must decide when they're gonna open it at certain points. We're lucky today that it is actually open, um, but the ticket to get into this area where the garden, the two halls are, and the pagoda, the ticket price was up from what it is usually. According to japanguide.com, the ticket price is 500 yen, but we had to pay 800 yen to get in today, and I believe it's because the base of the pagoda is open. So it's cool that we get to see it, but we've had to pay an extra 300 yen per person for the privilege. <laughs> That was awesome going up in there and looking at that. Um, there are Buddha statues in there. So as a general rule, when we visit temples and shrines, most of the time you cannot film where there are Buddhist statues. I believe it's something to do with recreating their image, isn't it? Somebody asked me on Instagram about shrine etiquette. Generally, when you visit, te visit temples and shrines, obviously be a bit quiet, which I guess I'm not being at the moment. Anyway, be a bit quiet, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit quiet uh, the other thing is don't take your camera out usually within the shrines and temples there's usually signs up which will say no photography uh, that's one of one of the things that you know it's one of the etiquette things I guess let's take a look at this garden there's a really beautiful little lake inside this garden a little pond pond it's a pond if it's inside a garden right uh, I've actually seen a mound of turtles in here on one of the rocks once upon a time I think it's probably too cold at the moment um, but if you do visit during a warmer season you can see turtles in this pond I'm not sure if these are here all the time, but they seem to have some festival stalls out here as well. Maybe it was here for uh, New yeah. Year's and these are the ones which are left over. But that's cute though, although it does look like they're packing up. everyone. I don't think I really said anything about us coming here. Uh, we finished up uh, in a couple of temples that we were trying to, I still need to get that right, in Kyoto. Uh, walked over to Kyoto Station via a shopping mall and took the train here to Osaka. Uh, we actually took sort of a local line that goes from Kyoto to Osaka uh, and it took 30 minutes to hit Osaka station from Kyoto station and from there we took an Osaka metro down to this area which is Dotenburi. We were walking down one of my favourite places, well used to be one of my favourite places, which was the undercover shopping street around Dotenburi area but in recent years it seems to have become very sort of tourist trappy. It kind of has a bunch of sort of quite sort of fakey cheapo shops so we weren't really feeling that so we decided to go off to this very very small uh yukioe so art museum uh, yukioe is woodblock printing and we've never been there before it was 500 yen to get in you were able to take pictures and videos as much as you like as long as you didn't use flash so we just went around there looking at the beautiful pictures that they had their special subject is theater and um, because in this area in osaka in dosenburi they used to be loads and loads of theatres, kabuki theatres and puppet theatres and uh, that used to all happen on the south side of the river, whichever way is south, it's that way I think, so all the way along there. It used to be uh, used to be theatres and I believe on the other side it used to be tea houses so people could go there before going to the theatre. Um, so we're now sort of beelining to, beelining? Beeline, bee, beelining. We're now going quickly uh, to a Okonomiyaki restaurant, which we believe 
does vegetarian, we know it does vegetarian food, it does vegetarian food. Uh, Osaka is well known for its okonomiyaki, so we are super looking forward to it. We've made it to Oko Osaka. I will put the name below. This Okonomiyaki restaurant is amazing. Uh, it's incredibly eclectic and we've been chatting to the owner all night, which is why I haven't been vlogging anything. Uh, they've got a TV running up there, which is currently showing K-pop. Previously, it was showing little cats and it just seems like we can change it to whatever we want. The PlayStation controller over there that we could just change whatever's on the screen, but we're quite liking the K-pop at the moment, so we're just leaving it. Um, the reason why we've come here is because they do vegetarian and vegan food as well as gluten-free food and so my okonomiyaki is uh, not one of those I've walked on for the normal one Liam's okonomiyaki which we'll be sitting here at one point uh, will be vegetarian and uh, vegans you can eat here they even have vegan um, vegan mayonnaise there's no egg mayonnaise which is amazing uh, so I'm gonna dig in now uh, there's not a lot of space here so there's nowhere really for me to set you up so I'm I will eat it and I'll just tell you about it afterwards. Maybe give you a few more shots of this amazing place. So yeah, let's go. It was so good. You liked it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so good. The owner in there was, um, well, the, was, there was a guy who was speaking to us who was working there. Uh, I think the woman was the owner. They were so sweet. Do you know what? One of the most amazing things there was that they had a really good understanding of vegetarian and vegan differences. So when we got there, they actually asked Liam if he was vegetarian or vegan and then asked him whether cheese and egg were okay, which was amazing. And so he still had cheese and egg in his okonomiyaki. If you are vegan, of course, you won't have that. And then gluten-free options are there as well so they make it with a different flower we're now gonna walk to our bar that we're going to this evening which is my favorite bar in the world which is bar space station hopefully they have some space at the space station um, <laughs> because it gets quite popular as a video game bar and um, the guy who was chatting to us whilst we were in there was really sweet and told us the route to go to get there which is interesting because we've been there a couple of times and um, and I have it on Google Maps on my phone so I'm perfectly fine but it was so sweet of him to tell us the route to go so it was adorable highly recommended if you're vegetarian and vegan uh, if you are strict vegetarian and strict vegan it's going to be very very difficult for you to find okonomiyaki anywhere in Osaka because it almost always comes with seafood and always comes with meat even if you have the meat and seafood not on the okonomiyaki there's usually seafood powder in the flour so if you're strict it's it's near impossible to find but they do it amazing to help people take photos <laughs> that's hilarious so if you want to take a picture there he goes he's not related to that family at all he's just going around with his two fancy lights helping them take pictures that is hilarious the bar space station was amazing i don't know if i told i did i tell you i can't remember we were going to one of my favorite video game bars after the okonomiyaki place one, one of my favorite bars in the entire world actually bar space station here in osaka video game bar it has retro consoles everywhere and new consoles we actually played a game that we've never played before a two-player game called kimbura or something like that awesome collaborative gameplay game amazing and then i played mario kart and then mario 64 i got about 17 stars maybe i'm overselling myself there a bit <laughs> anyway we had a couple of video game themed drinks there i had the stupor mario and the floating peach both amazing very sweet uh, i'm now by the really famous signs here in osaka we're just taking a few pictures and then we're gonna head back 
I'm gonna close up the vlog here. I'm gonna say you're gonna say goodbye to my face in a little bit. But I'm just gonna show you a little bit afterwards of the journey back to Kyoto. I won't be talking, I'll just put up some little tips and stuff of the journey back, how we got back from here in Osaka to Kyoto tonight. It's gonna take us about an hour and ten minutes to get back to our hotel, which is Citadines by Gojo Station in, in Kyoto. So I'll show you how we do that. But for now, I wanna say thank you so much for coming along with us today uh, to a couple of my favorite temples in Kyoto and to Osaka. And I hope to see you back on the channel another time soon for more fun around Japan. Thanks everyone. See you next time. Bye.